Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are gonna be making some calendula salve. Now this process started a long time ago. I grew this calendula last year. I wintered it over in the greenhouse and harvested it this winter and had to start making my calendula oil early. And I'll share that whole process with you, but you guys, this is something that my mom is gonna be so proud of. <laughs> I grew up, Whenever we went on a hike or, you know, whenever I was working out in the garden and cutting back specific things, my mom would either have me save things or like on hikes she'd have us, each of us kids would have a bag and we would have to look for certain things, certain kind of mosses or barks. I remember alder bark being a big one. And then she would take them home and make some kind of herbal concoction. And we always kind of made fun of her for it a little bit, but it got to a point where all of our friends would come and ask my mom like, hey, do you have any of that cream left? Can I get some more? So this stuff was actually working even though we kind of poked fun at her a little bit. And I've dabbled a tiny bit in making herbal things, um, but I thought that this would be a really fun one because I grew Lady Godiva yellow calendula for the first time last year. It's an amazing plant. I think it's a zone seven, but it wintered over in our cold frame beautifully. In fact, it's coming back. Let me show you quick. So you've got it tucked back in the back corner of the greenhouse and you can see it's even starting to put on blooms. I cut it back right after I got done harvesting for this project. And I'll probably either just leave these in here and pop it back out in the sun somewhere or uh, I might take them out and plant them in my garden. Anyway, it was a plant I was incredibly impressed by because of how tough it was, how I could just shear it back and it would flush back quickly. And it actually acted as a host plant for aphids in my vegetable garden. So I had some planted in the vegetable garden, the aphids, always went to that plant and it left all of my produce alone. Like I never had aphid problems on anything and I typically do, like on cabbage and broccoli, Brussels sprouts, they seem to get aphids. And so if I have the calendula planted, it's not a problem. Like, and I let the plant get kind of covered with them and then I shear it back and toss the foliage with all the aphids on them. And then we just start the process again and it comes back so fast and starts blooming, you hardly even notice it's gone. Um, so anyway, I did some research on the plant because for things like this, you want to use Calendula officinalis. Um, that's the type you want to use. It's got the uh, medicinal qualities and I think it's oftentimes confused for like the marigold that we oftentimes grow in our vegetable gardens. And this specific Calendula, the Lady Godiva, has almost fully double flowers, which means that it's a, um, a different version, I guess, from like kind of the old traditional types. Um, and the reason why I like the fully double is because it makes them almost sterile. Like they don't set as many seeds because they just can't uh, because of all the petals in the way. Uh, anyway, they do still have all the same medicinal qualities. So I harvested all of the blooms in here. Boy, it's been, it feels like a couple of months ago and I laid them out on a bamboo tray and put them in our front sun porch. And I left them out there for a couple of weeks and let them completely dry out. And then I went in and I picked all of them kind of apart and put them in this little jar right here and then covered them completely with grapeseed oil. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of oils you can use. In fact, I will link a bunch of articles down below and recipes that you can check out if this is something that interests you. I chose grapeseed in this case because I thought I was gonna be doing this um, process with heat because you can either let this sit on a windowsill for like four to six weeks, which it's been over four weeks now, and you just go and you shake it every day. Uh, or you can do a hot water bath and grapeseed oil can stand the heat. And I thought I was gonna do that in the beginning and I didn't, but grapeseed oil is a really good one. One to stand up to the heat, but it also is high in vitamin E and omega-6 fatty acids. And there's some other um, qualities about it that are good. And I don't know all there is to know about calendula. I'm sure that the list is long, like the way you, that you can use it, but I know it's used in a ton of different cosmetic products because of how good it is for the skin. Um, and that's how I'm gonna primarily, that's what I'm using it for. We're making a salve for like dry patchy skin. Benjamin tends to have like a dry patch on his cheek. And I've tried other creams and stuff and they almost seem to anger it. So I'm hoping that this is just a really soothing uh, thing for his cheek. And then I get really dry hands. I mean, let's face it, you guys have seen my hands, they're pretty gross. So I'm thinking that the salve will benefit us all. But I know it's got like antibacterial and uh, antioxidant properties all kinds of things. Again, I will link articles below because I am not a professional. But let me show you what I've got out here to make this. So I bought myself a single burner so I could set up out here in the greenhouse because you guys, it's gorgeous out here right now. I've got my fancy double boiler here. I've got the water already getting warm because we're gonna melt some of this beeswax in with our oil here in a minute. 
Got my spoon. I do have some lavender oil. I don't want it to be highly scented, just light. So I'm gonna use a few drops of that. We'll be straining uh, all the calendula stuff out of it, out of the oil, right into this little measuring cup. And then I'll be using my reamer thing to kind of push as much oil down into here as possible. I'm hoping for one cup of oil because I think one cup of oil will make four of these cute little tins. Aren't those the cutest things? Like I can give one to my mom and she will love it. Oh, hello, there's my mess. That's what usually is on top of this table. So I'm just gonna get started with this process. We're gonna strain the oil first. I've been so excited for this part, getting to open up the jar and see what's going on in here. We got a full cup oh maybe it looks like the oil has definitely taken on some of the color of the calendula petals it's definitely more yellow than when we very first started out and you can also use cheesecloth for this part but this fine metal sieve i find i think it works a lot better because the cheesecloth actually absorbs a lot of the oil and it's also a little bit um, like whiter weave so some of the calendula stuff makes it through Oh, you guys, we're so close to a cup. Close enough. Ooh, I'm impressed. So that's after the first strain. You can see a few little tiny things floating around in there. Not bad, but I'm gonna strain it one more time into the jar and see if I can't get a little bit more of that stuff out. I don't mind a little bit, I just don't want a lot. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Couple floaties. I'm really pleased with how the oil turned out and this is just about at a cup. And what you wanna use is one cup of the oil with one ounce of beeswax. So I order it by the one ounce bar because it makes measuring so easy. I just have to pop one of these bars in with my oil, but I'm gonna put the oil in first into my double boiler, my fancy one here, and I'm gonna just gently heat it up a bit and then I'll add my beeswax bar in and make sure that that's fully melted. And then once it's melted, we'll add in about 10 or so drops of lavender essential oil and then we can pour it into our tins. So it's really a simple process. It just takes a little while with all the steps, like the drying step and then the infusing step and such. So here we go, let's get the rest of this done. Oil's just heating up there. So now we'll just stir it gently until that beeswax melts. So we're about midway through the stirring process, melting process. You can see the bar is starting to break up into smaller pieces and the whole thing looks a little bit more creamy and thick. I'm getting excited. All right, it's all melted and I did end up turning the burner on really low and then I just put the mixture straight in the saucepan because it was taking forever. And I already added my lavender. I added about 10 drops and forgot to turn the camera on for that, but that's no big deal. I just stirred that in. Now I'm gonna pour it into the tins. Don't these look so pretty? I just love it. And it did make four, which makes me excited. So now we just need to let these sit for a while and harden up and dry and cool. So we'll be back in just a little bit. So they've been sitting for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. I did all my watering in the greenhouse um, while I was waiting for them to set. And I just, hey. what? Hey, oh, daddy's right there, baby. So I just tried some on Benjamin's cheek and we'll see how it does, but I wanna give it a try. The consistency seems really nice. I don't know if you guys can see that in this light, but it's really just creamy and beautiful. So excited and three, let's see, four ingredients. One ounce of beeswax, one cup of the infused calendula oil, which has the calendula flower, so calendula and grapeseed oil, and 10 drops of lavender essential oil. There, you might be able to see it a little bit better. It's beautiful. Now my hands soak up stuff like nobody's business, so I'll probably go through this fairly quickly, which means I need to be growing more calendula. So these are two ounce tins and it made four. So you could certainly do a bigger batch if you had more calendula. I barely made it with the amount of calendula that I had and I was just thankful to be able to harvest some right in the middle of winter out of the cold frame. And that won't usually, like it's usually not the case. It's usually a lot colder and so I don't have that opportunity. So I was very excited about that. Um, but I'm going to be amping up the amount of calendula I'm growing this year, both Lady Godiva Yellow and Lady Godiva Orange. 
um, because of how many wonderful things they do both in the garden and then the ability to make this sort of thing is really fun. So now I'm super excited to go give my mom one of these and see what she thinks. I'm also playing around with a few different ways to tie them up and make them look cute with little tags. So anyway, I hope this video was interesting to you guys. I know it's a little bit different than our normal projects, but um, something so simple to make and something you can harvest out of your garden and something that's so like useful to everyone, I think. Everybody can use stuff like this. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, hold on, P.S. I forgot to show you how I was packaging these. So isn't this cute little piece of rope with a cute little tag and there's a piece of decorative tape holding it kind of all together on the bottom. But what a fun way to kind of gift something like this to somebody else. Love it.